Hi guys and welcome to today's video where we are testing aquarium water with a range of tests. So the first one you can see in the center here is the API Freshwater Master Test Kit. This one apparently is very specific and it was highly recommended. Then we have the Total Hardness Tester and the Carbonate Hardness Tester. We also have a TDS meter, which apparently this is actually very important when you're keeping shrimp. So hopefully it'll be ha helpful. I've been trying to read up about the specific test and what it means when you get the results. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I don't totally understand it. So once I get the answers, I may just show you. And if you know what it means, you can kind of translate it for me. <laughs> and then also we have the water test strips. So these were in my haul video. And a lot of you guys said, you know, they're just indicators, they're not very specific. So what we will do is we'll test the water with one of these and then compare the results with the results we get from the master test kit. So we'll do the first test, the TDS meter. And you have to, dip it in the water up to here I believe you don't want to go beyond this point so let's just pop that up there you can see that go in and then we just press on and it says 157 ppm now I don't exactly know what that means honestly <laughs> like what that means in terms of like is this good is this bad it might be something to do with the fact that the water originally was hard water so maybe that it also can apparently take the temperature so let's see if it will okay so it's saying 21 degrees so it could ideally i could set this a little bit warmer because i've got snails coming soon which you'll probably see um, and I think they need it a little bit higher than that. So the next test we're doing with this aquarium water is the water tester strips. Um, as I said, these are only meant to be an indicator, they're not very specific, but they will give us a reading for chlorine, pH, total hardness, carbonate hardness, nitrite, and nitrate. Um, very important things if you look up the nitrogen cycle. So my tank has been cycling, I would say for like three weeks-ish, it's had a few water changes because if you saw when I was making changes I stuck moss to the rocks I had to drain out a lot of the water so I don't know how this is going to look and then yesterday I did do just your regular water change so we need to dip this in according to the instructions you put it in for two seconds you whack it around three times and you have to wait a second for chlorine and 60 seconds for everything else okay so it's been about a minute and on the packaging of these strips actually shows you the results that you can compare your test to and it also highlights certain areas that are green so green is obviously good yellow is medium reds bad so you can compare it quite well and know whereabouts you should be so the first one we will look at is chlorine so if we compare the first one I would say the chlorine is probably zero and that doesn't surprise me because I think I'm using quite a decent dechlorinator, is that the word? I don't know. So that's all right. The next one is pH. So I would say this is around 6.8 to 7.2, which is pretty good. They're good numbers. I say that pretending I know what I'm on about. Then we have carbonate hardness. And apparently we want it to be around here. Now, it's kind of dark in here. I It looks like it's about three. To me, it does look like it's three, which isn't ideal. Then we have total hardness, which looks like it's here, which is less than seven. So that's actually in the green section, so that is good. Then we have nitrite which i mean is it this one's so difficult i wish there was more of a difference in color because i'm like it is it white or is it slightly pink if it's slightly pink that's not good so i don't know about that you'll just have to see for yourself as for nitrate <laughs> this is very high i would say uh, probably 50 to 100 which is not where you want to be you want to be somewhere down here but that's okay that's why we're cycling the tank for the next test, I'm just gonna have to quickly record over the audio with this because at the time, I was trying to work out how to use this JBL carbonate hardness test and it takes me a while to figure it out, so I'll just say it here. Basically, 
Each drop represents one degree and you need to turn the water from blue to yellow. And if we remember from the test strip test, carbonate hardness was between six and 10 degrees. So we're looking to add between six to 10 drops. Um, so that was the eighth drop. The next test is by the same people, but this time it's for total hardness and it goes from red to green. Now from the test strips, we know that this should read more than seven degrees, but less than 14 degrees. So we're looking for between seven and 14 drops. <laughs> Was that 13? I think it was 13, but I sort of lost count. So finally, we're gonna try this test. So we've already tried, I've wrote these down, we've already tried to test nitrite, nitrate, and pH with the test strips. And the only other thing to test with this is ammonia. And the pH level, since we've finished, has actually gone darker on here, and it's looking more to be about eight. Um, originally we thought it was around 7.2, it's now looking about 8. But we'll find more specific answers with this. The first one we're going to be testing is nitrite. So that one was too high, apparently it didn't really give me any other reading. Um, ideally you want this to read zero. I think nitrite, nitrate and ammonia ideally needs to be zero. But, you know, don't take my word for it. Um, so, let me just undo this. But actually, first you need to shake it. Most of these bottles you need to shake before you use. And we're going to add five drops of this. And you'll find that on here it will say, like, add five drops. And I think we need to mix it afterwards. So, one, two, three, four, five the lid on and then we're going to mix it up oh and it's leaked and we're going to just leave it to settle for a little bit whilst we're waiting for that result we're going to do the nitrate Now that's done, we've got to leave it for five minutes and we'll get the right answer. And now we can look at the nitrite. So we'll compare it to the little thing that comes with the kit. And if we look here, I would say it's around here. What do you guys think? I think it's maybe 0.50. So not ideal, but it certainly could be worse. Whilst we're still waiting for the other test to settle, we're gonna test the pH level. Now you'll find you're gonna have two different bottles for this. Now the blue one is for like lower pH levels, but if you have hard water, if the water you're using for your aquarium is tap water and you know it's hard, you'll wanna use this red one. And I do know that I think the tap water here is hard, but we're gonna try them both out anyway. Now, as I said in the previous test on this tester strip, it's now moved to around eight. Uh, right here, so it wouldn't surprise me if we get our results from this. So, first of all though, I am going to use the blue one just, you know, just for the sake of it, just for showing you. And this one only requires three drops. And you'll know that you'll need the higher one because the blue will be sort of darker than the highest one, so you, I sort of already knew that. So let's try the other one. So the higher test requires five drops, and I believe the ideal pH for shrimp is between 6.5 and 8, so I really don't want it to be any higher. Mm -hmm. 
So right now, I think this is reading maybe 7.8 or even maybe 8. I'm not sure. It's kind of dark. Um, so I definitely think it's around this range, which I actually think is probably safe for shrimp. If it was going more purpley, then we would have a problem. As for the nitrate test, that is now complete. And as we can see, it's a very deep red. Let's say between 40 and 80. I don't think it's dark enough to be 160. And the final test we need to try is the ammonia. And I don't believe that was on the test strip, so I literally have no indication of what this could be. Once again, aiming for zero, but let's face it, it's probably not going to be that. So we have two bottles, and bottle one you need to shake up and then add eight drops. Take bottle two, shake it up, and add eight drops of this. And then we're going to leave that to settle for a bit, and then we'll get our result. So it's been quite a long time, and actually I think the sun's going down through the clouds. It's very dull here today. But the ammonia test is actually looking rather good. It's looking at maybe 0 to 0 0.25. It's very yellow in person. So at least we have one good result. After all of this, if we compare what we got from the test strip to all of the other results, they pretty much seem on point. So the nitrate, it said it was too high. Um, from our indicator on the actual tester kit, it was sort of midway. And I don't know why on the test strip there's only two options, that it's too high or it's okay, but that's just what it is. Uh, the nitrate on the test strip said 50 to 100 and we got 40 to 80 so once again in the same region uh, pH they said 7.2 to 8 because as you remember it changed and we got about 7.8 so once again makes sense ammonia we did not test that because that wasn't on the test strip then we have the GH which was correct the correct amount of drops and same with the KH so Overall, the test strip I think is a great indicator and obviously its its results aren't far off but I've really enjoyed trying all these out and if you want to know these are all from proshrimp.co.uk so check them out and thank you very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this. Yeah.